Hi gardeners! I'm getting ready to pot up some four week old tomato seedlings into seven gallon fabric grow bags and I'm going to show you how I do it. So the first thing I do is fill up the pots with potting mix. This is potting mix I made myself but you can get this at any garden center. It's important to use potting mix. Once I get my bags mostly filled with potting mix, then I add dolomitic limestone. And uh, there's a lot of different brands of this. This is actually not the one I usually use. I usually buy like a big 50 pound bag of um, like a powdery form of the dolomitic limestone um, but the store didn't have that this time so I just got this one and it it should work. The different brands will have different things on their label. It doesn't always just say dolomite lime like this one says garden lime so and other brands might say something different. So the main thing is to read the label that it should contain both calcium and magnesium. So this one does, and this label also says that it's derived from dolomite lime, and that is what you want. You definitely don't want hydrated lime. You want dolomite lime. So this one says that, and it also says that it does not pose the hazards associated with hydrated lime. So I know for sure this is the right thing. I'm not as thrilled with this because it's pellets and I don't know how well this is going to um, like be absorbed in, in the soil and like break down in the, in the pot, but I've used it before and I don't remember having any problems with it, but what I usually use is, is more of a very fine powder, but um, I think this should still work. So I'm going to use a half cup of this and that's quarter cup, there's another quarter cup, and then I'm going to mix that in just to the top layers of the soil, not very deep, just the first few inches of the, of the soil mix. One of the main reasons I use this is because it adds calcium to the soil and that helps to prevent blossom and rot in tomatoes and peppers and other fruits. So once that's done, I'm going to dig a pretty deep hole because I want to plant my tomato seedlings very deep in the soil. That should be deep enough. So the next thing I'm going to do is pinch off these two lower little leaves on the seedling. These are not true leaves. See, they're different. Um, these are true leaves. So I'm actually going to plant this all the way up to the bottom of this lowest true leaf. Um, this doesn't work with all plants, but with tomatoes and peppers, if you plant them really deep in the soil, it's, it's better for them. And everything under the soil, you see all these little hairs, those will develop into roots if you bury them in the soil deep. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I need to just um, get the, the tomato seedling out of the little pot. So I set the seedling deep down in the hole and then I'm gonna start gently pushing the soil back over the seedling till it's kind of high up around the stem. So like I was saying, I've got the soil coming to just below the first true leaf of the seedling. So I've got it buried pretty deep. And then I'm gonna kind of smooth out this um, area around here, but my pot is not totally full of, of potting mix yet. And that was on purpose because I'm going to kind of making, it's hard to tell in the video, but I'm trying to make a little trench around the outer edge of the pot. Um, and I'm making a little trench to put fertilizer in, and then I'm going to cover it back up. 
So these are the organic fertilizers I'm using. Um, this one you can find in just about any garden store. Um, this one has the OMRI label, so that means it is organic. And this one also has the OMRI label for organic use. And um, this one I got on Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the description. I try to find organic fertilizers that have balanced numbers. So this one's 444 and this one's 464. So, um, and I also try to find the ones that have like kind of high numbers because organic fertilizers usually have pretty low numbers. So I want to get as high of a percentage of the nitrogen, phosphate, and um, potassium as I can. One thing I don't want is that I don't want this first number, which is for the nitrogen, to be a lot higher than the other numbers. If, um, if it's too high in nitrogen um, in relation to the other nutrients, then it will grow a lot of leaves and like a lot of leafy green, dark green leaves, but it won't fruit as well. So the middle number is more for what makes the plants have fruit and since I'm growing tomatoes and peppers I want a lot of fruit so if any number is going to be higher I would rather be the middle number but I do try to keep it pretty balanced. So I use two cups of organic fertilizer in each seven gallon grow bag so I'm going to use one cup of each of these until I run out of this one because I'm probably going to run out of this one pretty soon. So. Um, if I was using a non-organic fertilizer, like I used to use 10-10-10, just regular like synthetic fertilizer, not, not um, organic, but just like the typical 10-10-10 you can buy in the big bags. Um, when I use that, I only use one cup. But since the organic kind has a lower number, um, I use more. When I first started out grow, uh, using grow bags, I was using a 10-10-10 fertilizer and I was kind of basing it on um, some instructions I had found online for, for wicking uh, self-watering uh, self containers and they recommended 10-10-10 fertilizer. But I actually found something that worked even better, um, this. When I, I just found this today, I didn't think I had any of this left. I stopped using it because it's synthetic and I've been trying to switch to organic, but it worked wonderfully. Um, this is 13, 13, 13 plus, micronut plus it has micronutrients. Um, this stuff worked amazing um, and I don't use nearly as much of it. So the instructions on the back tell you how much to use and for my seven gallon grow bags, um, I would just use two capfuls of it. So if you are fine with using synthetic fertilizer and you're not trying to be organic, then I would absolutely recommend this Dynamite brand, the 13, 13, 13 plus micronutrients. Um, if I was gonna use synthetic fertilizer, this is definitely the one I would use. And I would just follow the instructions on the back. Um, but I'm trying to switch to organic. I'm gonna go ahead and add two cups of the organic fertilizer to this um, grow bag. So this is one cup of the Sustain fertilizer, and I'm just adding it to this little trench that I made on the outer edge. And then here's one cup of the Job's organic fertilizer. So that's two cups. So now that I've added the fertilizer, I'm going to cover it up with more potting mix. So now it's filled with potting mix and the fertilizer is covered up. So all I do is just lightly water it in being careful not to pour the water directly on the leaves. And that one is all set. So after I get my tomato seedlings potted up, I add tomato cages to the pots. 
and I try to do that sooner than later so that when I put the stakes through the soil it doesn't hit the roots as they're growing out to the edges of the pot. So right now I know the roots are still towards the middle because they just got transplanted but as they grow the roots will spread out and I don't want to um, cut the roots when I put the stakes into the soil. So I went ahead and got the tomato cages on. Also, since the sun is still really intense this time of year, I draped some shade cloth over the tops of the tomato cages to just provide some temporary shade for the seedlings until they adjust to the full sun. Um, I'll just probably keep this up for like a week or so, and then I'll be moving these tomato plants into different locations. Uh, they'll be spread further apart from each other than this uh, when they get into their final homes, but um, I just didn't want them to be out in the full sun right away, so they're adjusting. Another option for providing temporary shade is row cover. This is what row cover looks like, and uh, this it comes in different thicknesses. This one's kind of on the thin side for providing shade, but if you double it over, then it's probably thick enough to provide a good amount of shade for some for seedlings temporarily. So I've used that before also. One last thing I want to mention about growing in the fabric grow pots is that when we're in the dry season, I like to use these trays to put the pots in and I just water in the tray. I just fill the tray with water and uh, the pots wick up the water from the bottom. That way you don't have to water quite as often but right now we're in the rainy season still, so I'm not gonna be putting them in the trays yet because then they'd be getting too much water and they could drown and suffer from overwatering. But once things dry up, probably in October, I'll start putting these fabric pots into trays like this.